What's good, y'all? I think we got everything situated. Just give me one second. It's my first time streaming on this channel, making sure everything's good. It's Soul Therapy here, live in the flesh. Bring my mic a little bit closer. Make sure I get that pristine audio quality for you guys. Looks like the stream is working. You love to see it. You love to see it. So while this is a stream, you can listen to it in a podcast form as well. I'm still working out, trying to get this on everything. So we're going to start on YouTube because that's what I'm most familiar with. So welcome, without further ado, to Soul Talk Episode 1. It's kind of funny because when I first made this channel... Uh, my intention was to always stream and have some sort of podcast associated with it. And uh, I just figured recently, you know what, I got summer coming up. We got a lot of great sneaker releases, a lot of heaters coming up that there's not going to be a better time than now to get everything started. Just making sure that everything is working. Looks like this scene is proper and good to go. Go back to this. All right, I think we should be chilling. So what I'm going to do first is talk about some of the recent pickups I had. And we're going to start off. Let me switch over my scene. We're going to start off with these puppies right here. You guys can't see these. These are the Metallic Navy 85 Lows. And they're one of my favorite sneaker releases the entire year. Like I had the original pair, the 2015 pair. I made a video where I made a comparison between the two. And honestly, these blow them out of the water. Now, I know a lot of people love that small swoosh. They love the bigger swoosh that's found on the 2015 and aren't really happy with the swoosh on this one. But I think this looks phenomenal. I think it's a great shape and it's a great size. And just the leather quality is buttery. I have the pair of neutral grays, uh, the 85 cuts. And that's honestly one of my biggest videos on my channel. So I do appreciate you guys watching it and supporting it. I know there's a lot of OG sneaker heads who love the 2015 and, and uh, the releases that came out during that time. But for me personally, I like the newer stuff. I do like the 85 cuts. I like the high tops and the low tops, but these are just so clean. And especially for the summer season coming up, you can find these on sale, which is crazy. Like I've seen these on sites for around 120 bucks with free shipping. If you can cop that for this, you can cop these for that price. It is honestly a no brainer. So my story with these is I actually went to a local, like a sneaker store, and I asked the lady how much they costed. And now she gave me the retail price for standard Jordan ones, like the GR releases, that was 115. So when I got to the register, she told me, oh, these are 160, that's the retail price for the 85 lows. I'm like, mm, for that price, I can pass. And I showed her like uh, the GOAT listing that I could literally get it shipped to my house for like, I don't know, I think it was like 140 bucks or something like that. So she ended up going with the 115, super clutch. Thank you for that. Uh, I had my eyes on these ever since they dropped and I knew the price was gonna keep going down. So I was waiting for the perfect moment and I scooped them. On the message of waiting for the perfect moment, I finally got this sneaker. I've been wanting these for a fat minute. I currently, own every reimagined pair besides the patent bred Jordan 1s. And honestly, I feel like they don't really count as a reimagined line. I feel like it wasn't until after the fact that they tell us they were reimagines, but I am looking to pick those up eventually just to complete the series, complete the lot. But if you guys know what I'm talking about, it's these puppies right here. This is the Jordan 1 Lost and Found, the Chicago's. A lot of people's favorite sneakers and I've had my eyes on uh, Chicago's for a fat minute the lost and found variety to be specific uh, because I have the developer boring the 85 cut and while I love those and I think they're cool I wanted another pair of Chicago's that I could just wear with no worries so I picked these up on goats I bought them used for a really good price and they were kind of cooked 
but uh, you know me, I like to restore my shoes, I like to take care of them, so I knew with a little bit of TLC I could get them looking fresh again, and uh, super excited to have these in my collection, they're definitely going to get a lot of wear, especially now that the weather is getting nicer, so I'm very, very happy with these. Looks like we have an ad on the music. Let me pause that for you guys real quick. But yes, these are the Lost and Found Chicago's. Let me know if you guys have these in your collection or not. I know it's one of the more popular sneakers. All right. Let me turn the music back up for you guys just a little bit. Please bear with me. Like I said, this is my first time doing any sort of podcast, any sort of stream on this channel. But I do appreciate your patience. So... We're on House of Heat, my favorite sneaker news website. We're just going to go ahead and talk about some of the releases that happened and some of the upcoming releases that you guys should be excited for. All right, let's see. I guess we'll start off from the very top. We'll start off with these Nike Dunk Low Concords. These have already dropped at a lot of stores, and I've seen them in person. Uh, not the biggest fan of these. Nike Dunk Low just... The quality control has been awful. If you do not get the SP versions, uh, it's really not worth it in my opinion. They feel like plastic on your foot and there's like a lot of molding issues. Actually, let me see. Let me see if I have my pair of Polar Blues. I can show you that the, just, the QC is insane. Hold on, give me just a second. All right, y'all, check this out. And for you guys who are listening to this in a podcast format, I'm going to try to explain what's wrong with these. These are the Nike Dunk Low Polar Blues. One of my favorite colorways, to be honest. I was a big fan of the UNCs. I personally wasn't able to snag them. So this was an awesome alternative. And I got these below retail. So you cannot complain about these, this color. Like I said, the quality, these literally feel like plastic, but... For those of you who cannot see, the midsole, the front of the toe is literally wobbly on this pair. Like, <laughs> it is so bad. The The quality control is just insane. It literally looks like there's waves in the front of the shoe. Just insane. Still a good shoe. I still do like these, and I'm happy that I have them in my collection. And especially under this lighting, they really do look like UNC's. And it's a great summer shoe. Uh, also, another video that done extremely well on my channel. So thank you guys so much for showing love on the Polar Blue review. Because I know a lot of people were excited about those. And I know I wasn't the only one who wasn't able to hit on the UNCs when they got super popular. I heard they were going to restock them. There was great school sizes that got restocked. But no men's pairs, which is so disappointing. I don't know why Nike does that. Like, Just let make the shoes available, please. But... That's besides the point. Let's get back into some of the other drops. We got these Nike Shocks R4. I don't I don't think any of you guys are going for these. Uh, we got these Rick Owens Converses. I do like the Converse weapon. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, the Rick Owens collab is kind of random, but they're not bad looking. Uh, would I personally buy them and rock them? Probably not, to be honest. Then we have the Air Jordan 1 Low Method of Make. They need to make do with this pair and get rid of it. I don't know what they were thinking with that. Then we have the Nike SB Dunk Low Big Money Savings. Now, this is an interesting pair. Uprise, which is a sneaker, uh, well, it's not only sneaker, it's a skate shop uh, that's located in Chicago on the north side, right off Milwaukee, if you guys know what I'm talking about. All my Chicago and natives, you guys know what I'm talking about. They dropped these, I believe, yesterday. 
and uh, most of the sizes did sell out. I think by now they're probably mostly gone, but I do really like this pair. I like the designs. I'm not the biggest fan of the material choice for the toe, but it's an overall good looking shoe. Next up, we gotta talk about our Supreme Nike SB Darwin. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be anything too crazy. I did go to uh, the Supreme store today, and it was pretty interesting. They had some Supreme Doc Martens, which is just a random collaboration. And uh, I sent a picture to my friend, and he said it looked like they had mold on them. So that kind of tells you uh, the truth of it. Let me see if I can actually pull up a picture. Bear with me, y'all. Green Doc Martens. Let's check these out. Yep, these are them right here. Yeah, <laughs> he thought those little green spots on the shoe were mold. And to be fair, it kind of looks like that. Uh, I don't think it's a horrible looking shoe. It's interesting. They're going for like 220 in store. I think they had a price around 198 or something like that. So they're not going that much over retail. But let's talk about some more sneaker news. The, I think what I want to talk about mostly to you guys are the Kobe's that dropped and the Military Blues. Let's talk about the Military Blues first. And I seen a lot of discourse online because if you look at the actual title itself, it is not the Military Blue. It's the Industrial Blue, I believe is the name that Jordan Brand is giving it. And this is not the first time Jordan Brand has done this where they've kind of changed the classic shoe just in a little small details, including the color. Uh, but I think it's just got a lot of people upset because they just want a standard OG release, especially with the new Jordan 4 shape, which I got to say is buttery. I love my Jordan 4 breads, the leather reimagined pair. It is so comfortable. It blows my other shoes out of the water. I actually have the white cement 4s and just that toe box shape is super uncomfortable. I don't wear that shoe often. I love having it in my collection. Obviously, it's an OG colorway and it's an awesome shoe, but I don't like wearing shoes that give me pain, especially uh, just trying to rock them casually. It's not like I'm actually hooping in those shoes at all. So that was a little tough, but for me personally, I struck out on the Military Blues in my size, but my homie came through, hit the size 12, so that review is going to be coming very soon. I'm super excited for that. Going to be throwing some nasty fits together. And let's talk about some of the other releases. I think we have to talk about these Kobe's, these Venice Beaches. I went in person to Round 2, which is another store on the north side of Chicago. And I got to see these in person. I thought they were really cool. I also got to see the, the Philly Kobe 4 Pro Tro in person as well. Uh, another store called Boneyard had them, and they both look really good. Um, I recently made a video on the original Italian camo from 2011, and it was awesome hooping in that shoe. So I assume the brand new Pro Tro isn't going to be that much different, you know? And I'm very, very happy to see them releasing more Kobe's because Kobe shoes should not be as limited as they are. Give me one second, y'all. I'm going to fix the audio levels. I honestly think it's a crime that uh, it's so hard to get these Kobe's because let's let's actually let's go ahead and check. Let's check what the market is looking like for the Kobe six Italian camo. Because this is the one I went for on the sneakers app. No chance. So retail was one hundred and ninety dollars and my size men's 12 looks like it's selling for around four hundred and seventy eight highest bid four seventy three. And I must admit, it's a good-looking shoe. It's an amazing performer. The Kobe 6 is honestly just one of the greatest basketball sneakers, period. Like, even when it comes to looks, I think they look phenomenal. I love the scale pattern in them. And uh, I think they're overall just an amazing shoe. So if you guys were able to cop those, big kudos to you. Big, big kudos to you. Next, we're going to talk about these Kobe 4 Phillies. I think the Kobe 4s are cool. Uh, I was actually able to thrift uh, the Rookie of the Year Kobe 4s. And it was funny, when I made that uh, that short and when I made that video, I got kind of spammed in the comments where people were like, oh, those are fake. 
those are not real or they were overpriced. And some of it was true, definitely being overpriced for a Goodwill store. Like 200 bucks just in general for shoes is a lot of money. And I think us as sneakerheads sometimes don't realize that. Like retail is expensive. 200 bucks can go to a lot of other things. And uh, I think it's just interesting that our perspective on shoes as sneakerheads is just different compared to other people, just standard people, you know? But I personally, I personally really do like the Kobe's. And for that price, it was honestly a steal. I mean, for me, picking up two of those pairs was awesome. I got the Rookie of the Year, and then I got the Italian Camo that came out back in 2011. And they were awesome performers. I actually uh, sold the Rookie of the Years. It passed authentication, so any concerns about them being fake or them not being real, completely thrown out. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know how many people from that short are going to be watching this podcast or listening into this podcast. But uh, yes, those Kobe's were real. I think uh, one of them was like a PE for Devin Booker. I honestly doubt those were real. So maybe a combination of both real and fake. But I know at least the ones that I got were authentic, which I'm happy about. And uh, when it comes to my stance on buying fake and real shoes, I mean, if you're not in a I feel like it doesn't really matter to a certain extent. If you're going to hoop in the shoe, buy real, buy fake. I know there's a lot of great fakes that live up to the same specs of the real ones. And honestly, if it makes you happy to have that shoe, I say more power to you. Rock whatever you want and rock it with confidence. That's the way to go about it. Looks like these Jordan 1 Low OG Barons are going to release. This is where I kind of get upset because... We have the 85 cut. We have the 85 cut Jordan brand. Please, just give us the sneaker releases for the Jordan 1s in the 85 cut. And that's kind of my issue with the high tops. Uh, we got the metallic burgundy, which I was considering doing a review on. But honestly, I don't know how popular those shoes are. Uh, there's plenty of reviews already out there about them. And I'm someone who loves the OG colorways. And I think they're a clean pair of shoes. But if I would personally keep them in my collection, the answer has to be no. Because unfortunately, there's just nothing too special about them. I wish we got 85 cut Chicago's. I know we got the black and white pair. Come on, Jordan Brand, keep giving us more OG colorways. Uh, I wouldn't mind switching it up uh, with some more colors for sure. Uh, the one thing I did peep uh, pretty recently, let's see if I can find a picture of them. The Jordan 1 Low 85 in the black colorway. Now, this is not an OG colorway by any means. Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, I think these are them. This is not an OG colorway, but I think it looks phenomenal. And if you're going to give us multiple releases of 85 lows, I'm here for it. I think it's a great looking shoe. And honestly, it's not doing well in the aftermarket. And I could care less. Let's see if I can. Let's see what the prices are looking like for the metallic blues. Look at this. 108 bucks. That is crazy. Guys, retail, standard retail GR Jordan 1s are. 200 or not 200 I'm sorry are 115 bucks the 85 lows are going under that price which is absolutely insane uh it looks like the highest bid is 97 if someone gets them for 97 bucks that's insane so these are 108 let's see what the neutral grays are i'm interested now okay it looks like the neutral grays are going for a little bit more respectfully so i do i do like the aging on these but I'm not going to lie. I see myself wearing the metallic navies a little bit more. Now, out of interest, let's check out the 2016 metallic navy lows. This is the one that came out back in 2016, I believe. It was either 2015 or 2016. And my size, $425. Crazy. Literally. One four for the price, you can get the brand new Metallic Navy 85 low. And I know sneaker purists, like we said, like we had this conversation, they love 
it being as true as possible to the original. But I personally think for the price, you, it makes a lot more sense to go with the Metallic Navy 85 Lowe's. It's an amazing shoe. But if you have that original 2016 pair, still in good condition. Rock those. Enjoy those. I had a lot of fun having those. I got rid of them out of my collection. I don't need two pairs of the same colorway. So uh, that's, that's that, basically. Very exciting release, too. But, uh, yeah, these OG variants, I wish they were coming in 85 cuts. But it uh, looks like that's not going to be the case. Those shadows that actually dropped... I wanted those, those shadow lows when they had that sneakers live stream. I was able to get the artisanal red, artisanal red. I don't even know how the heck you say it. <laughs> I was able to cop those off that sneakers live, which was pretty exciting. Uh, I was happy about that, but I didn't cop the shadow OG lows. Another shoe that I wish was, I just, I just wish you could give us with the 85 cut Jordan brand. Please make it, make it happen. Please, please. So. We got these Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Lowe's Elkins, which I believe is his high school colors. Uh, I believe those were called Canary Yellow as well. And honestly, I think they're horrible. <laughs> I know that's not really that much of a hot take. And then those of you guys who are listening in audio format, those are the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Lowe's that are yellow and they have the blue Nike swoosh. And personally, they can keep them. I know the resale is still going to be crazy. Anything that is Jordan brand, Travis Scott, sells, it moves. His name does numbers. And you can't deny the fact that, you know, he's been very influential. But I just, if I were to cop those, I don't see myself keeping them by any means necessary. Uh, I mean, I, I bet the quality on the shoe is pretty good. But just the gum sole and just the color combination doesn't work. I mean, some people may applaud him for moving on from earthy tones, but honestly, he still hasn't moved on. We got a lot more Jordan 1 low releases that are having featuring earthy tones, which was pretty interesting to me because I remember the the golf shoes were supposed to be the last low top Jordan 1 low. Nope. Uh, I feel like it was only like a month or two after we kind of got leaks and rumors of these other Jordan 1 low tops, which is interesting. I wonder where that original leak actually was sourced from when it turned out to not be valid by any means i think it's it's a good looking shoe though you know just a jordan one low silhouette you can't go wrong with it you just gotta get the right colors and uh i'm interested to see when those are gonna actually drop this page here house of heat says may 17th i feel like we get a lot of dates release dates for travis scott sneakers and they don't come out so it should be interesting to see if this actually comes to fruition or not Looks like we have the Jordan 1 High UNC returns in golf form. It's interesting because I was actually looking into buying another pair of UNCs. Obviously, I'm not going to get the golf shoe. I think it's kind of whack with the Jordan, the jump man on the tongue with the golf logo. But if you're a golfer, I mean, it's got to be a cool shoe. But from what I've seen online, these UNC, one lo UNC ones, their quality is just like the suede on it fades quick and the shoe looks awful in my opinion it kind of looks like knockoff hyper royals when you have that vibrant unc blue kind of get fading out and they're kind of a nightmare to restore and to clean so i said you know what i'm not going to put up with that and hence why i bought the lost and founds instead you get that leather upper now this pair definitely needs a little bit of work uh especially when it comes to that red leather some of it has definitely dried out a little bit with time but I think with some more work, I'm going to get that shoe looking phenomenal. So I was happy about that purchase as well. Looks like we have these Jordan 1, or actually not, these are the Jumpman Jacks. I love that he is experimenting with his own silhouettes. I think that's a huge step in the right direction. The Jumpman Jack silhouette is pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely very reminiscent of a Jordan 1 low, but it has its own personal touches to it. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this colorway, to be honest. This university red is just not doing much for me. But up close, leather looks good. I've heard these shoes are very heavy. Uh, I believe the retail is fairly expensive on them too, at around $200. But that insole is nice. And since these are official images, look at that dust bag. I love when sneakers come with dust bags and nice boxes, that really puts it over the edge for me. Because I'm a true sneakerhead. I keep almost all my boxes. I think the only box I'll ever throw away is just your standard orange Nike box. 
uh, but I love to keep most of my boxes and I think the packaging is really cool the Jumpman Jack I thought the trailer and the advertisement I thought that was really well done and uh, him saying these are an all-around lifestyle shoe is just simply not true <laughs> Uh, these are definitely just a lifestyle and a casual shoe. I wouldn't be hiking. I wouldn't be hooping. I wouldn't be not doing any of that in those. But with that being said, they're just a really clean shoe. Maybe I'll be able to cop them. We'll see how that goes. The Jason Tatum 2s released. And uh, this is something I, I wanted to talk a little bit about. Uh, I would appreciate you guys' feedback if you're watching this in the future on the live. Tell me, should I do more basketball sneaker content? I feel like there's a lot of channels that are already dedicated to basketball shoes and all that. And uh, I don't want to be just another voice that doesn't have really anything new to offer. I personally have been playing basketball my entire life. And uh, I love basketball shoes. Before I had Jordans, before I had that, I had LeBrons, I had Kobe's, I had Kevin Durant's. That was the shoes I was rocking, I was wearing in my youth. So it definitely holds a special place in my heart. I do love the new MB lines. Uh, I make videos on those, I make shorts on those, and they seem to do really well. And when I did that retrospective on the, the Kobe shoe, it was really well received. So if you guys want to see more just retrospective reviews and stuff like that, I would love to hear your guys' feedback. I'm always looking to start new initiatives and really challenge myself with uh, new formats of content to bring to you guys. So those are the electric greens. I feel like I didn't talk much about the shoe. I don't like the Tatums. I don't like the Tatum ones. I think these are kind of ugly as well. And this colorway is not doing it for me, to be honest. So let's move on. These New Balance 9060 Chrome Blue. I saw when these dropped... Uh, I got a bunch of Twitter notifications, and I'm fairly sure they sold out. Let me just double check. Let's see what the prices are looking like on StockX for these. Actually, maybe they're under retail, which is interesting. I see the 9060, 166. I want to say retail is like 150 on that. I think the 9060 is a cool shoe. It's definitely a comfortable shoe. But it looks huge on foot. I remember when I tried on my size 12. It was it not only fit too big. It just looked humongous. And while I do like chunky. I do like beefy shoes. I'm a big wearer of uh, Air Force Ones. But there's just a certain amount where it becomes just a little obnoxious. And I think the 9060 is just kind of at that point. It's a comfortable shoe. The quality is pretty cool. And I think it's a good looking shoe. It's just not something that I see myself rocking. That's why I would not pull the trigger on these, even though this is a fairly nice colorway. I do have to admit, it is a fairly nice colorway. Let's take a look at these Jordan 185 PEs. Oh, these are butter. See, Jordan brand, you have these in the vault. Bring them out. If they bring them out, I swear, I'm, I'm, I'm copping two pairs. I know I just said that I don't buy multiple colorways uh, multiple shoes of the same colorway, but this just looks buttery. Look, as you see the exposed leather interior, you know the quality on these are nice. And with that 85 cut, that is such a nice touch. If I could get my hands on these, I definitely would, but I know these PEs are going to be putting up numbers for sure. Let's hope we get an extended GR release. It doesn't have to be a PE, but just bring these out, and I would love to see them. Wow, these look crispy. I actually uh, pre-ordered the Jordan 1 High 85s from Developer Boring. Uh, if you guys don't know what Developer Boring is, he makes custom 85s and tries to make them as true as possible to the original. And uh, he's coming out with some UNC joints. I pre-ordered those. I'm excited to get those in. Hopefully, I could be one of the first and I can make a review for you guys because you guys really loved when I did the Chicago 85s from Boring. But yeah, man. These look great. Very excited about that pair too. Let's take a look at these Jordan 1 High Lattes. Definitely giving me mocha vibes. I'm sure you've guys seen these. These are going to be a women's exclusive. I hope they do come in extended sizing. Because all my big feet kings deserve some cool shoes too. That box is nice. I like that, that they've been switching it up with the Jordan 1 box. I feel like the longest, uh, I want to say... Was it the Lost and Founds? No. 
I want to say it was maybe the patent breads where they started changing the box uh, for the Jordan 1 releases to match the sneakers. I do like my Royal Reimagined, have that black and blue box. It's just easier to tell what sneaker you have, especially when you have a lot of shoes like me just kind of stacking up. Uh, you don't want to read every single time the color codes. You can just look at it at a glance and know what shoe you're grabbing. So I love that they're including those touches, and I think that's just a great shoe. We have the book ones. I recently made a short on the book ones in the, I believe it was Raven colorway. Let me double check that for you guys. It's the Haven colorway. My apologies. But yes, I recently did a little short on that and that absolutely blew it up. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of hype and a lot of excitement behind the book one. Which is awesome. I think it's cool to have basketball shoes that have a little bit more traction. All right, no, no more puns for me. They have a little bit more traction in the in the sneakerhead community and the sneaker scene. So I think these are really dope. Uh, I'm a big fan of them. They're comfortable on foot. I do have to mention though, uh, the sizing is kind of weird on them. I'm not gonna lie. I rock a size 12. I put these on and my toe was being smushed. So I think you would have to go maybe a half size up at the very minimum or full size up, uh, depending on your foot shape and all that. So these Jackie Robinsons dropped today. Let's take a look at them on the aftermarket because I was going out shopping. I went to a couple of boutiques and uh, none of them had them in stock. Looks like they're actually commanding some decent resale value. 310. That doesn't surprise me. It seems like all the Jackie Robinson releases with Nike are fairly limited. Uh, and I imagine this one really isn't any different. It's a good looking shoe. I personally wouldn't rock it and I would not pay 310 for it. But I can see why people would enjoy that. Definitely. Let's see. I want to see if I can get pull up more pictures for you guys. Let me go back. I think I think it's a great shoe. The Air Max One Big Bubble is honestly super solid. Uh, I was out thrifting today and I found some Big Bubble in the red colorway. Thinking back into it, I should have probably bought it. They were sixty-five dollars. The only reason I didn't buy it was there was some staining on the mesh. And from my past experience with Air Maxes, cleaning that mesh is so difficult. Sometimes I know people say toothpaste method, all that, blah blah blah. It's, it's difficult, and they were a little bit too too dirty for me. You guys will see the video when I upload them, probably tomorrow. Uh, but it's a really nice shoe, the Big Bubble. I find them pretty comfortable as well, and uh, it's an OG colorway. I do like the Royal Blue colorway a little bit better, and I went to Boneyard, which is another store in Chicago, and they had a size 11 used for 100 bucks. If that was a size 12, I would have been all that, all over that, but... Uh, Unfortunately, it wasn't. The next sneaker we got to talk about, we've talked about this a little bit before, Military Blues. I know, they're technically Industrial Blues. I don't know what they're doing with this name. When they unveiled them in the sneakers live, they said Industrial Blue, but apparently on the box it says Military Blue. So what's going on with these sneakers, Jordan Brand? Let me know, please. What are these? <laughs> are they the Military Blues or not? Uh, and here they are. I think what's most interesting about this is that the upper is not a white, it's not a pure white colorway. As you can see, that midsole is a lot more of that stark white, and this almost has like a grayish hue to it. From the videos that I've seen, it almost looks blue in some shots. I'm pretty sure that might be just the blue accents overshadowing onto the sneaker itself, but these are phenomenal looking. And there's a lot of pairs. I'm so happy that I, my friend was able to scoop that size 12 for me because I know even though there's a lot of pairs of these, they are going to fly. If you look back at just the military black, those absolutely flew. And I know sneaker culture was a little bit different when these first came out, but the color blocking is exactly the same on these. And these are a $390 shoe, which is crazy. I feel like these haven't dropped as much as I expected them to. And it's not a bad, it's a great shoe. The Military Black is a great shoe, but it does give kind of like just 
basic sneakerhead vibes. I know I'm, I'm not gonna judge anybody because this might have been like someone's first shoe that really got him into collecting shoes and collecting sneakers. But let's take a look at the military blues. Personally, I'm taking the military blues any day, any day of the week. I'm blue is my favorite color. That's why the Soul Therapy channel is blue. That's kind of the whole entire reason behind the color scheme. But it looks like these are sitting at 285. After taxes, after all that, I think retail was like around 240 bucks, at least for me in Chicago. So that's insane that it really is not going that much over retail. Like I said, great shoe. That blue is a little darker than the previous releases, and I know it's been turning people off, but it's the brand new Jordan 4 shape that's closer to the original with the flatter toe box. They're just great. They're phenomenal looking. I hope anybody who's out there trying to get them is able to scoop them. Another release we got to talk about is this upcoming Jordan 4 and this oxidized green. I love this. This is awesome. When Jordan brand comes out with new original colorways that are just clean, simple, not doing too much, just changing the accent colors just like this. This is a good shoe. I know some people were calling them like the poor man's pine green. And my hot take for you guys is... I think these are better than the Pine Green SB4s. I know, Jordan, SB, collab, it's huge. But personally, I think these are just great looking. They kind of have a vintage aesthetic and vibe to them that I really dig. And uh, the Pine Green SB, that green just isn't my favorite type of green. And I think this oxidized green is definitely going to be something closer to what I want. I'm definitely going to be bringing you guys a review when they come out. I don't know if they're going to be personals yet, though. Because uh, for me, I'm really just trying to keep my personals to OG colorways that I've really wanted for a long time, such as these military blues. Uh, as soon as I found about about those shoes, back when I first got into sneakers, I wanted a pair, but uh, I just didn't want to get the previous release. I wanted something a little bit more modern because 2012 was already kind of old when I first started getting into those sneakers. Uh, let's take a look at these, these first in-flight colorway coming out in 2024. The, the Jordan 1 has been struggling in terms of sales, in terms of hype. Uh, do I think these are going to change that? No. I don't know how big of a release this is. It looks like it's going to be maybe more of just like a, a low-key uh, release. But they're not bad looking. I, I like this texturing. The tumble leather looks pretty good. This material, I'm not sure if that's full-on leather or nubuck. But it's definitely giving me kind of like UNC reverse obsidian vibes. Uh, the gold touch, I'm not the biggest fan of, to be honest. I wish they would have maybe put that white, but not a bad looking shoe by any means at all. Looks like we got some Shishiko Air Force Ones. These are pretty cool looking. Uh, they do remind me of the Shishiko Nike Dunk Lows that dropped that were actually pretty popular. That's when Nike Dunks were still moving and it was hard to get your hands on. It's pretty interesting now that most of these releases are just easy to come by. This Urban Landscape Nike Dunk Low is pretty good looking as well. I do like the color blocking. It almost has that cement pattern to it too as well. Awesome stuff. Asics. Asics have just been moving like crazy. Uh... Part of me doesn't really understand the hype. I know it's kind of similar to that New Balance. The runner trend is huge. But Asics to me just, they don't stand out. The materials aren't phenomenal. The color blocking, I guess, is kind of cool for some of the collab pairs. But I feel like New Balance, especially with the Joe Fresh Good stuff, they've been knocking out of the park. And I think Asics is remaining basic. <laughs> I know that's kind of just like a common take online. But for me personally... They're all right. If you like your Asics, I'm not going to tell you to stop wearing them. Wear what you want to wear. Wear what you like. But for me personally, uh, you won't see me in any Asics anytime soon. Interesting. Nike Yeezy S MX Calm Slide. I love how Nike just casually bites off <laughs> Yeezy brand with their, their releases, especially these slides. Wow. Uh, these slides are awful. <laughs> The, the calm slides are not comfortable. When it comes to Yeezy slides, they blow them out of the water completely. I mean, it's not even close. We had a restock of the Dia de Muertos uh, Jordan 1s. I want to see if maybe these are still available. 
Looks like they might have sold out. Looks like there's one size left, 8.5. I love the details and textures on this shoe. The box is dope. Uh, me from being a Hispanic heritage, I think it's an awesome shoe. Do I like that it's an air comfort too? Not really. I mean, it's going to be more comfortable than your uh, standard Jordan 1 release. But for me, at least, it's not a necessary pickup. Uh, I, I wouldn't know what I would wear it with, to be honest. It's such a striking shoe. Definitely would have to rock something a little bit more subdued. Uh, these Era 404s are going to be released as some sort of Nike exclusive. Uh, this is obviously just an attempt at making like a silly, goofy shoe from Nike. Uh, it's kind of been common trend just to make shoes that are dumb and don't really make sense uh, to gain attention. And this is just another example of it. And I think these are kind of just soulless. There's no real excitement behind them. The requested upper was not found. Try again. Honestly, rocking these, I would probably, I'd probably laugh at you if you pulled up in those. So not, not a fan of those 404 errors at all. The Air Jordan 4 Vivid Sulfur. Now, this is interesting. This shoe right here just completely sat. Like, it's not really moving for anything. I'm pretty sure it's going under retail in most sizes. Uh, Jordan's been putting out a lot of yellow shoes. Just a lot of yellow. And while the color blocking is amazing, I mean, it's fire, right? Color blocking. The yellow itself is just not something that most people are going to wear. It's kind of hard to style, hard to put together outfits. And... Uh, the sale milled sole just doesn't look right when it's right next to the yellow. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if these actually go on sale, which is crazy for a Jordan 4, but it has happened before. Looks like these Nina Chanel Jordan 3s are coming as well, and these are looking nice. I think the materials, the quality is looking pretty fire on these. I'm a fan of this. I love when they experiment it, especially when it comes to the collaboration pairs, like kind of redefine the shoe while keeping the silhouette true i'm not not mad at that at all interesting this is the first time i'm seeing this news the air jordan 12 flu game returns spring 2025 these are going to be a problem they brought back the cherries last year and i know a lot of you guys were excited about it i was excited about those as well made a review and that review did pretty well got some good feedback from it and uh, I think this is a cool shoe. The flu game is iconic, especially, you know, when you go think about the actual historic value in the game that Jordan was able to perform while experiencing that sickness. It just really shows his resilience. And uh, I think it's a really, really dope shoe. Next up. Looks like we got some Air Max 186. It's interesting. They've been making a lot of these 86 cuts for golf shoes, I actually went to the Nike outlet. I saw black and I saw a blue colorway as well. Uh, I don't know why anyone's going to golf in some Air Max 186s. I feel like it's kind of random to throw the big bubble on it. But if Nike wants to do it, go ahead. I think it's cool. If you're a golfer, let me know if you enjoy those or not. But uh, the last sneaker that I really wanted to cover was the Air Jordan 5 Black Metallic. Now, when it comes to OG colorways, I want one of each model going all the way up to 13. And I know people are like, make the clock, make it 12. But no, the 13s are so fire. I need a pair of 13s. And this is a must for the clock. The black metallic Jordan 5 is insanely clean. It's probably my favorite Jordan 5 colorway. And the last time we got a Jordan 5 was... 2018 or 2019 we got the last release of this metallic five my only request to jordan brand is just please keep these as original as possible we don't need reimagined treatment we don't need a leather upper keep it the new buck or the dura buck whatever it came in and just make it as true as possible to that that is definitely going to be the key for this release it's an amazing looking shoe i hope they're able to alter the silhouette a little bit Keep it looking as true as possible to the original. I feel like Jordan Brand has done a great job just tweaking the silhouettes and making them as close as possible to those original releases. So before I end off this podcast, before I end off the stream, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about what's to come for this week. I have a video that I'm editing right now where I went to a bunch of Northside sneaker stores, found a lot of great used shoes for awesome prices, and uh, I know it's going to be an exciting video for you guys. So that should be posted 
if not today, by the end of tonight, it's going to be maybe tomorrow morning. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for all the support. Uh, I know for me, I've been trying to stay as consistent as possible, at least uploading a short and uploading you guys more videos. If you appreciate more of the content, uh, the best thing you could do for me is subscribe, leave a like, and just send it to your friends. Sharing is key. Uh, I do appreciate you guys. I'm looking forward to doing more of these live streams, growing with you guys. I know it's different from the content that I make, but uh, I hope to continue to keep growing alongside of you guys. Thank you for watching, and have an amazing day.